Adam Lerner, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about advanced editing in Lightroom and perhaps maybe using a tool that a lot of you guys possibly haven't really checked out very much. Um, this is a, a shot I did recently of a couple. Um, this was shot in New York City on the High Line, which is a really fantastic park. Um, it's an elevated highway, or the remains, or the remnants, let's say, of an elevated highway that were adopted by an organization that turned it into a wonderful park that goes about 30 blocks through Manhattan. Uh, spectacular views and really beautiful greenery and just a really, really nice spot to uh, do some photographs. In the background is the new-ish standard hotel, which is really stunning. Um, definitely uh, provides a nice um, look to the whole vibe of all of this. And, uh, you know, the kind of orientation that this couple is facing is toward the west where this sun was setting. And uh, believe it or not, this is just natural light on their face. There was just this little, little bit of nice light that was coming through here. And situating them right where I did allowed for me to get this nice kind of like orangey, um, golden hour sun on their face without really overly illuminating the rest of the scene. So, you know, this is the shot right out of the camera. Let's just take a look at this. This is one one thousandth of a second F32 at ISO 200. So I, I, I went for the lowest ISOs. I wanted the image to be really clean. I went for F32 um, because I wanted to, I, I didn't want to have everything in focus. I really wanted to isolate um, them and uh, just maybe some of these foreground uh, elements in the image here. And I was at 28 millimeters, um, meaning that I was sitting relatively close to them and I wanted to go super wide, but I didn't want it to be too distorted. There's a little bit of distortion happening over here, but I didn't want really kind of a lot of curvature. And the reason why I went with one one thousandth of a second is because I wanted to try to close down some of the ambient light there because it was really quite fairly bright and I didn't want the scene to be too bright. Okay, so let's just first start with what we're going to go go on here. Now let's just check in our exposure. There's just a very, very, very few bits that are that are overexposed here and nothing that I'm really concerned about. I'm just going to take the highlights down a little bit and like by taking the highlights down we just get a little bit more richness in the sky. So I'm just going to go about here and I'm going to also add some blacks because we don't have a lot of blacks and I just want to thicken this up and often when you add blacks to your images, it just kind of creates more of a sense of clarity. Speaking of which, let's go into clarity. We're going to just pump up some midtones here. Now, I don't want to go too crazy because if you can see what happens when you really pump it up too much, you get kind of like um, an overly saturated effect, which I really don't want to go for. I just want to just bring that up just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more oomph, a little bit more impact. Um, I'm going to just do a little bit of light sharpening here. You know, we'll just click over here. Just bring that up to a point, and again, I don't want to go too crazy. Um, and I'm masking it off so I can just uh, sharpen the edge detail and not the textures and stuff like that. So let's just quickly do it before. I'm sorry, that's the edited version that you weren't supposed to see yet. Um, actually, I made a virtual copy, so we're just going to keep running with this right now. Okay, so. Now that I've kind of given things away a little bit over here, um, I want to get into the HSL, okay? So this is the, the hue, saturation, and luminance, HSL, okay? Now, you can see there's a little picker over here. And the cool thing about this is that you can take your picker, and you see now it's floating, and you can select any portion of your image, and you can just, with your, you know, you can scroll up and down, and you can change the hue, saturation, and luminance of pretty much any portion of your frame and really just selectively change that particular color channel. So I'm just going to go in while I'm in saturation, I'm going to select the sky here and I'm going to pull that down. So I'm scrolling down and look what happens. Okay. I can essentially get all of this, the blue out of my image. And now we've got what appears to be a gray sky being that the windows on the, uh, the standard were kind of bluish as well. They've turned gray. However, you know, that's not quite the effect. I mean, we could really kind of go with this and we can go on the green here and I can bring the greens all the way down. You know, now it's just starting to look funky. You know, like let's say if we just took the reds and the greens down, um, let's just see how that looks over here. So it almost kind of looks like a, a black and white um, selectively colorized image. All right, so let's forget that. 
And let's go back into the blue. And what I want to do is I actually want to push the saturation up. So I'm scrolling up, I'm scrolling up, and look at the detail that's coming into the sky there. That is pretty, pretty darn cool. All right, now I don't want to go too far with this. Now let's go into luminance. Same kind of thing. I'm going to select into my sky. I'm going to pull the luminance down, okay? So I'm going to take some of that luminance away and look at all the detail. Look at all the structure that I'm getting in these clouds over here. And at the same time, while you're doing this, you don't want to get too carried away with what you've just done because you also want to account for skin tones. The fantastic thing about this right here is that I am not affecting the skin tones or not enough to lose that golden hour glow. So again, you know, let's just bring this down just a little bit more. And it's a little bit exaggerated, but I have to say, I really like it. You know, we're just going to make these greens look a little bit more intense. And, and look at that image here. I mean, the difference is stunning. And I think that a lot of you guys might not necessarily be aware of what you can actually do by just going in with the selective picker on the HSL. There's so many things. You can desaturate, you can oversaturate. We can go in here, we can grab the uh, the picker over here, we can grab this red brick building here, you know, and we can bring the, uh, the, the luminous down on that and we can give that more of a look. However, look what happened to them. It looks like they've gotten a really, really bad sunburn because their skin tones are sharing a lot of the same tone uh, color channels as that building over there. So that's where we have to be careful. Now with Lightroom 4, there are some, um, you know, uh, uh, there are some tools like the brush tool. We can go in there and we can selectively, you know, change um, the, uh, the temp and the tint for white balance and stuff like that. I don't really want to go for that right now. All I really wanted to demonstrate to you guys was how cool it is to take a relatively boring sky. And let me just, um, go back over here. This is the actual final edited image. But let me show you what this looks like again. This is this is the image right out of the camera. Nice clean shot. Plenty of detail. We've got some nice wisps in the sky. We've got some really nice exposure on their face. And just by adding a little bit of, of blacks, bringing the highlights down a little bit, adding just a tiny bit of contrast, okay, and a little bit of sharpening, and then going in and going into the HSL, look what we end up with. Um, I like this. I mean, it, it's it's a little bit different. It's a little extreme, but there's something really intense about it. And I, I love what's happening in this negative space over here, the way that those clouds are just kind of kind of painted in there. I think it's a really, really cool thing. Uh, granted, look, it's not going to be for everybody, but I wanted you guys to know that there's a lot that you can do specifically with that HSL. And, um, you know, particularly when you have a sky that doesn't have a lot of drama and you want to add some more drama to the sky, this is a pretty quick and easy way to do that by just going in and honing in on specific color channels. So uh, that's it for now. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and uh, we'll see you soon.